Good evening. Good evening. We are back here once again on Sunday evening. Um, we are here at Umbawa Radio, and we are dedicated to the promotion of literacy and the advancement of authors and writers from unrepresented groups. I am your host, Simone, and today on our show, we have the most awesome Christine Gray. Uh, Christine Gray, formerly known as Sapphire, is the CEO of After Hours Publications, as well as a very creative writer assigned to Royalty Publishing House. She has been heating up the BWWM romance scene with her talent for creating books that pull her readers into the story, allowing them to experience every emotion since 2014. Her gift for original storylines laced with mystery, humor, and erotic moments combined with strong women and devilishly handsome men has brought her a large fan base in a very short time. Welcome, Miss Gray, to the show. Hi, thank you. I'm very excited to be here. Oh, it's great to have you here on this Sunday evening. Um, well, mm-hmm. I guess we're going to just kind of dive right in uh, to the interview. I'm very, very oh. curious about you as you know, um, as a author. My first question is, what made you decide that you wanted to be an author? Um, well, um, I would like to say that it was like something major or catastrophic or something like that, but really, um, I just always had a desire to write. You know, I've been writing ever since I've been in high school, um, from doing monologues and, and plays and stuff like that, um, um, you know, in my school and also in, in the church, um, and it just and it just morphed basically. You know, I've 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 always been someone that, um, you know, was always in her mind, or you know, like a person that's always like inside your mind. You know what I'm saying? Um, so so it was just seems like a very um, normal thing to start taking some of those thoughts and those imaginations and just start you know putting putting them to you know paper. And um, that's basically how, you know, uh-huh. I started. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Well, you said nothing. Uh, most times, well, the time that I've interviewed other authors on this um, show, I've noticed that mm-hmm. everybody's thought is different. And mm-hmm. it's never really something outlandish or anything like that. Most times it's something that uh, they feel like uh, they want to get out something they want to share. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. And, you know, I find that most times when they are talking about their particular reason why. And mm-hmm. with, with your first book, how did, you decide, how did you decide on that particular topic or come across that particular idea for that first book? Okay. Um, the very first book that I wrote, um, it was underneath my original pen name, Sapphire, um, and that was Don't Tell My Husband, um, and it was a series. And uh, it was something I was playing around with for a while, and, and um, you know, I was writing it out, and then I just stopped, and I was like, oh, you know, you know, don't, don't, don't do that, <laughs> you know what I mean, you know what I mean, because it was very, <laughs> because it was very erotic, and, you know, you know, so on and so forth, um, and um, I dream all of my books. So, you know, you know, usually um it starts off with a very realistic dream <laughs> and then I wake up and and then I just start outlining um what I've dreamt. So that's really how Don't Tell My Husband really came to be. It was um a dream that I had and it turned into a book. So needless to say, I have very, very interesting dreams. <laughs> um, okay. Just from that title. Yeah. I can get I, yeah. I can get that idea from that. Well let me ask you this. As Christine Gray and as mm-hmm. Sapphire, of course, for that first book, your pen name, mm-hmm. let me ask you this. When individuals that know Christine Gray first mm-hmm read that first book, could they believe mm-hmm. that it came from Christine Gray? And you said it was so, it, it, so erotic, would they have thought? Yeah. 
It all depends on who it is. <laughs> um, needless to say, um, my 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 mom has never read any of my books, and I told her not to read my books because, you know, she would be constantly on her knees praying for me, you know, because she's really into the church. Uh, um, yeah, um, and and her side of the family, you know, you know, uh, my uncles are, you know, apostles and and preachers and and so on and so forth. So needless to say that when they caught wind that I was writing and, you know, some of them actually read, well, some of my relatives actually read my books, um, they definitely look at me in a different light. <laughs> I'm quite they, sure. They, yes, yes. They, they definitely look at me in a different light because, you know, when you see me in – and that's what a lot of people say, you know, that, that I look very young, you know, I look I look very innocent, basically. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, then when they start, you know, cracking open my books, you know, then then, you know, they have to look and say, You want that? <laughs> <laughs> that's you. Um so so yes, there is a major shock factor that um goes along with with uh with 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 reading my books and also knowing the person definitely okay okay mm-hmm. I, I would assume when you, an explanation for that side of the family I, I can most uh definitely believe that quite quite you've got quite the stairs i'm quite sure and quite oh, the yes. questions uh questions oh. that go along with that of course oh, I can, yes. you know basically here where in the world did you get that from and why would you why would you write that? I, I'm quite sure those were just a few of the questions that you got. Uh my exactly. leads into my leads into my next question. Uh how did how how did it take how long did it take you to complete uh, Don't Tell My Husband and what was the process like writing that book? Okay. Um actually, um, you know, I know that this is gonna be, you know, maybe be a shocker for some people, but Usually, um, from start to finish, it usually takes me three weeks to write a book. And, and you know, that's why, you know, a lot of people, you know, they kind of like be scratching their head, like, you know, how are you able to put out a book a month, <laughs> you know? Mm-hmm. But, but basically that's why because, like I said, you know, it's, the entire book is literally already written, already mm-hmm. in my mind. Okay, so so when you already have a very clear picture as to who's going to say what, you know what I mean, and excuse me, and 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 the story. So then, therefore, only thing you have to do is just is just sit down and fill in everything with actual dialogue. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um. So so therefore, with don't tell my husband. Um. My publisher, Portia um, Sterling, you know, um, uh, she and I, you know, it was, I think it was like uh, October, actually, um, of 2014, and uh, we were talking or whatever, and I had, you know, had told her um, about about this idea, and she had already been trying to work on me to, you know, sign with her company and actually write something. Um, so... So, you know, I told her the idea, and um, she was like, you know, write it, write it, write it, write it, write it. So, so I said, sure, you know, and then I would probably say, like I said, two and a half weeks later, I was, I was sending her the book, you know, and, and, and that book was, came out, and the release date was Thanksgiving Eve, was Thanksgiving oh Eve. So, okay. yeah, so, so, so that gives you a little bit of a window as to, um, a timeline of start to finish. Yeah. Gotcha, gotcha. That is a mm-hmm. short window. Small, very small <laughs> window. My first book took me over nearly three years. There's <laughs> no way in the world. I, I'm, the, I'm the type that will write um, maybe a few days, and then I may not pick it back up maybe for another six months. That's just how I operate. But the whole time the process is going on, I'm making notes and writing, but I'm, it's just to sit down and put it all together. I'm, I'm not. I'm, I guess I'm a major procrastinator. You can say that too. 
that wow. that's something I'm trying to overcome, procrastination. So that's one of the big problems with that. What um what's so rewarding about writing books and being an author? What's rewarding for it about for you? My uh, what is what what is my reward? It no, is what is it, yeah. yeah. It it okay. for me it is mm-hmm. interacting with my fan base. You know, um um you know like just just um just today um I was I I was posting on my Facebook channel uh, or Facebook page and I did a poll because you know I had an idea of of writing this particular book but you know I wanted to see if they would even read it, you know, and just and 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 just posting something and then getting such a a large response, you know what I mean, back from it, you know, it it it, it excites me. It and 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 also to read their comments, you know, about you know, like one person had said that um, that um, that reading my books. You know, you know, has helped her relationship. Um, you know, it has helped her to think out of the box. You know, when it came to her life, you know, one one reader has 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 told me that um, from reading one of my books, you know, the storyline mm-hmm. resonated so much with her that it caused her to step back and to reevaluate her her own relationships and so on and so forth. Um, and and also too, you know, because I am an interracial uh, a writer, um, you know, a lot of the readers have have said that it has opened up their minds, and you know, now they're playing around with 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 the idea of even dating outside of their own race. So, so that is what is rewarding to me is to know that. Um, People actually do invest. You know what I mean, and they really yes, do. Yes. In you know, you know, they really enjoy what I have to say. So, so that is what is really rewarding to me. And that's, you know, that's that's the greatest sort of when people are investing in. And I agree with you on that. And what I'm telling that um, in the process, and I know your first book. Um, did you quickly find out that? It was more than just writing, uh, more than choosing a cover. Uh, it was about about being an author. There's also the business side of being an author. Yeah. And a lot of times I've mm-hmm. noticed here locally, a lot of the authors, when they say, oh, I want to write a book, I've written a book, but then they quickly find out that it's more than just worrying about uh, it being edited correctly, uh, about it mm-hmm. being the cover looking a certain way. They soon find out it's a business side of it. Were you, oh, yeah. Were you... Uh, prepared for that side of it, or were you kind of just thrust into it and kind of um, as learned as you went, or how was that process for you? Well, um, of course, from the Jump Street, you know, I didn't know everything. You know what I mean? And and I have learned an awful lot. You know, like on my journey since that first book. You know, I'm still even learning. You know, you, you know, because now I'm also wearing the publisher hat too. Um, but, but as in regards to that very first book, um, it was relatively a pretty good experience for me, um, because Portia and I, you know, uh, we already had a, a, uh, a friendship, you know what I mean? Um, so, so, you know, a little bit of, you know, things that she was going through and, you know, so on and so forth, you know, with with her being CEO of her company, um, you know, she had already shared some of that with me. Plus, plus two, you know, I knew that I was signing with someone that I knew that that was going to take care of of what I birthed, okay? Mm-hmm. Um, you know, so, so in that aspect, no. You know, um, I did have, you know, a lot to say, you know, in the um, title and with the cover, but but there really wasn't too many issues. Now, uh, now as regards to the business side, that that I didn't realize that uh, 
play an awful lot into it is the promoting. Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, I had no idea, you know, about how the whole Facebook monster, you know, entity works, <laughs> you know. Um, so, so I had to learn basically, you know, the whole the whole marketing strategy of it all because a publisher um, will on, can only do so much, okay, as in regards to them promoting your work, okay, you as in regards to the writer, you also have to do your part as well. So that is what I learned, you know, from from day one with that very first book is that you have to be your loudest cheerleader, okay? You can't just sit back and just expect for somebody to, to you know, open up every door for you. No. Um, you have to hustle too, basically. Okay, and I agree with that. Uh, you have to, uh, and I think that's. Uh, well, I'm gonna say that what I what I what I saw from my standpoint. Like I said, I can go back to the local authors that are here in town. Um, there are some that are some that are, have been successful here locally, but I've noticed that they bypass the business side of it and jump right into the marketing and promotion promotional side of. Mm-hmm. Their, you know, getting their book out there, and they never think, you know, stop to think about the business side of it. And a lot of them, mm-hmm. and in the end, um, they 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 don't they don't really make it uh, to be. I would I don't want to say not that the book was not a success, but the part of the business part of it is unsuccessful. Mm-hmm. And that's why I'm so glad we have the opportunity for them to listen in to authors like yourself and others that have been there and. Admit to not knowing everything from the, I like to say, from Jump Street. That it's a process mm-hmm. of learning and you know re- researching and I guess trial and error also. But you have oh, yes. that's something that's very beneficial to doing this. You have the business side of it. You have to be balanced on on, on mm-hmm. all areas of doing this, and that's a, that's an awesome thing. Now, in your in, as you were speaking about promoting and. Um, marketing your book, what books, what are some of the things that, some tips that you can give our listeners in doing that and getting the word out about your your book? Um, I would probably say visual. You know, visual, visualization is the key that I have found. You know, um, in any type of product, you know, that is the reason why, you know, you flip on a TV and 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 they're selling a burger, okay? You know, but but uh, they they uh, the commercial is so either catchy with a phrase or they um, is a play of words to make it very sexy and sensual, you know. And you're just selling a freaking burger, <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, but but it's those visual tricks that does something within a person's mind that 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 captures their interest and makes them want to, you know, buy that pair of pants because for some reason they think that their butt is going to look just as good as the chick that was modeling it. Um, so for me... I make sure that, you know, whatever promo poster, um, you know, that that I'm posting in groups or I'm putting in, you know, that I'm putting on my Facebook page or I'm posting on Instagram or whatever, you know, that it is visually appealing, okay? Mm-hmm. Um, so, that, so that would be my one tip. And also to remember that, the human attention span is very, very short, okay? So whatever you are pairing with that that visualization, it has to be quick, it has to be catchy, and it has to sum everything up, okay, within a sentence, maybe a sentence and a half, okay? So, so that would be definitely be my tip when it comes to the whole marketing thing. Make sure that it's crisp, that it's clean, that that it is put together, you know, that you're just not slapping anything out there. 
because it is a representation of your product. Okay. Mm -hmm. So 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 you know, slow down, take the time to make sure that whatever you are putting out there that is associated with your brand or with your name that or your product, that it is clean, crisp, it is visual visually capturing and whatever slogan or what have you that is sweet, short and to the point. Gotcha. Gotcha. Excellent, excellent advice. Um, but when in thinking about the next step, um, let me ask you this, and I always ask authors, is what is the most, have you done, I'm quite sure you have, book signings. What is the most unusual place, venue, that you've held a book signing? Hmm. It was like at like a bar lounge, <laughs> <laughs> you know, um, type of thing. You know, the space had been rented out. Um, but there was like a live bar that was also there too, um, you know, and um, that can be a good thing, but then that can be a bad thing too, you know what I mean? You know, you have that open bar there, talking to people, you know, you get kind of thirsty, <laughs> you know, um, you know, and you and you just find yourself, you know, going to that bar. <laughs> um Excellent. Yeah, so so that was probably the most interesting place that um I had a uh um sign at. But 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 also too it 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 really helped everybody, you know, calm down, loosen up. You know, so it really did end up being a very fun um fun event, but um, needless to say, everybody came can't hold their liquor, and um, so you know that's what that's what that's what definitely made it very very interesting. Very I'm interesting. Sure. Yes, I was, <laughs> and I've noticed that you know I guess you have to sometimes step outside of the box with the book mm -hmm. signers, and you know normally years ago uh, you saw them at bookstores, you saw them at libraries, but now people exactly. are you know, authors are starting to get a bit more creative. Um, to go mm -hmm. where I guess the people are, so to say, and I've seen them get yeah. a little bit more and more out of uh, just out of the norm, and I, and that's a good thing. Mm -hmm. and like I said, you have to go where the people are. It's just that simple. Uh, and and exactly. that, that sounds yeah, that sounds like it should it should have been really fun and quite quite different for me to do mm -hmm. that. Uh, <laughs> and being and we're just out of this is April second, and we're just out of. Uh, barely out of uh, Women's History Month, uh, which was last mm -hmm. month, March. Uh, mm -hmm. what, let me ask you this: Who would you say? Uh, what what female uh, author mm -hmm. uh, you thinking uh, you you really that that's the one that your top author, female author? Who is it that you you read or you have read that you know really left an impression on you? Uh Gosh. <laughs> oh gosh, you know, um I know me being African American, I should say something like Maya Angelou or, you know, something like that. <laughs> but um but I am and I have always been a romance junkie. Um so Probably this author is probably someone that I'm sure your listeners may not have even come in contact with, and maybe you haven't either. But um, Susan Johnson, I don't know if you ever read any of her books, but no, I have not. Um, yes, um, you no, know, she's more Caucasian, you know, type of, mm -hmm. you know, yeah, you know, type. Of. But um, Susan Johnson, because um, I I think that I've gotten my creativity when it comes to my the way I do my my own stories or my characters. I cannot stand a weak woman mm -hmm. in my books at all. Okay, you know, I mean, sure, you know, my characters are flawed. You know, they have their frailties because, you know, they have their issues that they may be battling with or, you know, whatever. But still, 
the woman is strong, okay? Mm -hmm. Um, And that's how her women were in um, her books, okay? Her books were very sensual. They were very erotic. um, But, you know, the women were strong. So even though they were dealt a crappy hand, all right, they did not allow themselves to be taken by by the man or to just be kicked around, you know, in you know, with with you know, with whatever situations that they're dealing with. So I would definitely have to say that Susan Johnson, she the 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 author, she really made a strong imprint um on me as a person. So yeah. Okay. Uh, is that particular author, Susan Johnson, is she still um, publishing books or releasing books or writing? Um, I haven't written one of her books. I'm assuming not written, but I haven't read one of her books in years. Um, I don't really know if she is bringing out anything. If she is, I'm pretty sure that she's really old. Okay. So, I mean... So she may not even be the one that's actually quote unquote really writing the books, if you know what I mean. Gotcha. <laughs> you know, yeah. But um, but um, you know, she has a very vast, vast catalog. She she never really did anything um, uh, modern. You know, all of her books were always like the historical fiction. You know, like the you know, like the Viking or or the or the Scottish guy. You know, or he's like the noble rake or you know something like that. <laughs> you know, but yes, but, but yeah, definitely her. Mm-hmm. Okay, so we we found out who your um, the literary person that you look to. Who would be mm-hmm. the woman? And um, and I'm quite sure I probably already know the answer, and probably most of the listeners. Who would be the woman mm-hmm. um, that's the woman in, in your life that mo- has most influenced you, not so much as in writing, but um, and just in life, the, to help to help uh, Christine Gray to be who Christine Gray is. Well, that's very easy, and yes, I'm sure mm-hmm. that you do know this answer because you probably heard it many times. <laughs> uh, well, I would that, I, I would I would definitely have to say that it's my mom. Um, but not just her, but all of the female, you know, women, you know, my 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 mom, my grandma, you know, my great grandmother, um, they are, you know, very, very strong women. You know, my grandmother, my great grandmother, you know, they've passed on, but you know, and thank God, you know, I have my mom, but definitely, definitely um strong women. Um, you know, once again, you know, you know, when life kicked them down, you know, when, when, when they struck out on love or, you know, whatever, you know, they, they always pick themselves up, um, you know, and, um, my, my mother, um, she has held up her, herself to be a very, very, strong um example for for everyone you know um and um therefore you know definitely is definitely her you know i she she knows me like a book you know it irritates me because you know i can i can be staring off into space and somehow she knows exactly what i'm getting ready to do <laughs> you know they, you know they have a way of knowing us Exactly, you know what I mean, and 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 uh, she'll like give me that look, and she's like, you know, don't do it, don't do it, you know. I'm looking at her like, what do you mean? <laughs> you know, I haven't even done anything, you know. But 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 you know, she knows somehow. She knows. Um, but yeah, definitely her. You know, um, she has. Yeah, I I just don't know how I'm able to do it at at times, you know, because so many people look to her, you know, for advice and for motivation, you know, and she always seems to know just how to spread herself just right, okay, to wherein she's able to touch, 
and be a blessing to everyone. Um, so, yeah, you know, she is she is definitely, you know, one of those bright stars that um, I definitely look to um, in time of need or guidance or whatever, definitely. And, and you know, that, and I, I've learned, I, I say the same thing uh, about my mom before she passed. You know, it seems like they, they know you, but they always seem to make themselves available for everybody, mm -hmm. and, you know, it, with her life uh, at her services, I, you know, I kept hearing the same thing over and over. Every person that got up and said something, you know, about her being a caregiver. She was a caregiver mm -hmm. just about all of her life, everybody. If anybody um, was sick in the family, um, she would be the one that would take care of them. She, you know, and and she was always the one that took everybody, the kids during the summer, uh, when mm -hmm. their parents would be working during the summer, she would be off. She would take everybody's kids and be in her yard from the neighborhood, and either you know, just our cousins. Everybody was at that house, and most weekends, uh, my cousins would leave on Monday morning and go to school from our house because they didn't want to go wow. home. You know, and wow. you know, have, yeah, you know, just to sit, yeah, everybody, you know, and it kept that same phrase about her having a servant heart. And that was, mm -hmm. and when I thought about it sitting there, if they were speaking, I thought about it. And I said, "Those, that's exact the phrase to fit her." And I would always tell her. She said, "You know what?" And she instilled that in us all the time. She would tell us, "If you can't help somebody, you certainly don't hurt them." And that's if she couldn't help you, she definitely wasn't going to hurt you. And that's I right. carry that, and I've I've passed that on to my daughter, and I've told her that all of her life. But the same that same phrase she said over over to me and my brother growing up, I would I say mm -hmm. that to her. If you can't help somebody, you're in, but they seem to fit it in. They know you like a book. My mother knew. She said, "I could, she said, I could tell in your mannerisms when something is not right. She said, I can tell the way you move. I know when something is wrong." She said, "You can't fool me." That's when I try to fool mm -hmm. her. She said, "You can't fool me." She said, "I, I carried you for nine <laughs> months. You can't fool me." And they, it's right. And I guess as we get older, we'll become them. That's right. Yeah, we'll become That's them. Right. And, and I That's yeah. A good thing. Yes, that's exactly. a good thing. Yes, it mm -hmm. is def definitely a good thing, and uh, I, you know, I loved. Uh, and I'm not. I have nothing against male authors, but I love speak <laughs> speaking and interviewing female. Please, male authors, if you listen, don't get mad. But it's just a, a, a <laughs> you know, I, <laughs> I just can, you know, I, 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 I can relate. I think better to female mm -hmm. um, authors better than I can male authors, and I think I've only interviewed maybe one or two. But I just mm -hmm. it's just a you know a connection, and you have so much in common um, with a female mm -hmm. author. And uh, as I let me ask you, do you do tours or anything like that? Or I do not do tours um, mainly because I also homeschool my kids. Okay. Um, um, so 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 you know I have to be definitely you know you know making sure they on their <laughs> and too. Um, so how many do you have, but, and what are the ages? I have three kids. Um, one is fifteen, one is fourteen, and one is ten. Oh, so, so nice yes, yeah, so I have a a tenth grader, a ninth grader, and I have a fourth grader. Okay. Um. Yeah. Um. So, but 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 this year I plan on being at the Atlanta Kickback. Mm -hmm. On July the twenty second, and then September the sixth. I will be in New Orleans for the interracial um uh book book tour. Um it's called Swirling, Swirling in the Bayou. Um okay. yeah, so so I will be there for for that and I think that um it's two days. Um it it starts on the sixth and it ends on the eighth. So I'm really excited about that one because Okay. The kids won't be with the hubby and I, so you know we'll be having some fun there too. So I'm yeah, excited. Yeah, I really enjoy New Orleans because I, I live exactly about an hour north of New Orleans, so I oh, you know, wow. will enjoy that. Yeah, I will enjoy New Orleans. New Orleans is definitely, and that's a city when um, interracial is so many different combinations of uh, exactly. couples there. So it's the perfect mm -hmm. place. That's like the melting pot. I say the melting pot of the South. Uh, they're from everywhere, all ethnic and uh, backgrounds, and all different cultures and religions. It's just, it's just a beautiful city. It's just beautiful, a beautiful place. I love going there. I always uh, enjoy. You can't, you cannot go to New Orleans and not enjoy yourself. It's impossible. 
Absolutely okay, all right. Well, I'm you are going to. I promise you, you will love it. You'll love everything about it. It means it's just something about New Orleans. And if you ever go, you will always want to return over and over again. Awesome, place. beautiful. That's right. right. So I, I, so you got you have a right to look forward to that. That's going to be a great trip. So um, that's good that you're kind of getting out and um, like so to say, spreading your wings and. Um, getting an opportunity to meet some of your followers and places in different areas. Uh, let me. Um, I'm trying to think of another question that I had at the tip of my on the tip of my tongue that I wanted. <laughs> now, now your genre, uh, interracial, I guess erotica. What would would be? Is it romance uh, novels? What is your romance? You know, you know, still a lot of erotica. Um, and and. And I'm also doing, um, um, I do a little bit of the paranormal romance slash erotica, you know. I mean, I mean, the only reason why you have, you know, I, you know, you put that erotica, you know, at the very end is more of a disclaimer to, like, let people understand that, that when those parts come out, you know, come up in the story that, that they need to buckle themselves in. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Because mm-hmm. Uh, if they're not used to that type of writing, well, then, you know, they may possibly be turned off, you know, from it. Um, because I know that there are some writers that they, you know, kind of glimpse or they, you know, they only touch on those subjects. No, you know, I touch on those subjects and I and sometimes I park for a very, very long time, <laughs> you know. Um, oh my goodness! And and, when, and in that area, you know, let me say I, I'm gonna say this about that that genre. I think it is it has grown by leaps and bounds as far as followers. Mm-hmm. People mm-hmm. are beginning, I guess. People that you, I guess, some of your followers are not what you say would be the norm. What what is your your demographic? What what age group you think um, is your demographic for your books? Um, I tend to get like from eighteen to like thirty five. Okay. Um, you know, you know, as in regards to the age. Um I have um fans that are in Jamaica. Um an awful lot that's in Jamaica and in the Bahamas. Um, um of course the US, um, Canada and and um, I even have a couple people that's even in Japan, you know, um, <laughs> you know. But um, you know that that tends to be the demographics. Of course, mm-hmm. the majority of them are female. But I have you know gotten comments and um, reviews, you know, feedback from men that um, that uh, you know were were commenting on some of my books, um, and it was, you know, more than, you know, them just trying to hit me up, you know what I mean? I mean, you know, they really went into detail, <laughs> you know, so so I know that they actually actually did read the, the book either on their own or, you know, with their female significant other, you know, I don't know how they came in contact with it, but, but um, yes, yes, yeah, that's, that is, tends to be my, my current demographical area. Okay. 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 Mm-hmm. Well, let me. I'm going to tell you, your genre. I don't. I. I don't think I've ever. Now I've. Re, I've read when you say romance novels. I'm. I'm not really. Uh, I've never. As that's not. That's not been a genre that I've kind of. Um, I've read a lot of books in. I'm. I'm mostly. I'm a. I like historical, um, fiction. Um, mm-hmm. And when I think about. The first person that comes to mind in your genre, she's really, I guess she would be in your genre, would be Zane. Would you compare yeah. your writings to those of, of Zane? Because I can remember uh, my daughter being in high school and coming, she had a book. She had the book, mm-hmm. uh, one of Zane's <laughs> books. What? I think she might have been a ninth grade or tenth grade. Oh, I remember oh, coming across that book. And I, I, I held on to it for a few days, and I guess you probably wondered where it was. And uh, mm-hmm. I asked, I, I, as I started to read it, and I said, I, my, I, I couldn't close my mouth. 
And uh, I, and, and I, I laughed and I said, now, what in the world? And I asked, and the first thing came out of my, it was somebody else's. I said, well, what are you doing with it? It was somebody else's. Yeah, somebody else's. I, I'm just holding it. I said, oh, I said you were more than holding it. You were reading it. And and I, I said, well, and I remember asking her. She she was so embarrassed. She wouldn't even look at me. I asked her, I said, what do you think about it? And, and she hasn't answered me till the day, and she's 23. So she never could tell me what her thoughts and what she thought about it. But, you know, even they're curious about it. And after I discussed, I kind of I mentioned to a cousin who has a daughter in the same age group with her, she said that must that might be that same book. She said, because mine had it too. I said, well, it may be the same book. I said, but I got it now. And it was just the <laughs> funniest thing, funniest oh. thing about them with the books. But, you know, they're, uh, they're going to be curious. And, I, you know, that was mm-hmm. just a big thing during that time, uh, though, that particular mm-hmm. author. Jane, but you know, I don't have an issue. I guess I need to reread more of it. Uh, but I have a I'm, that's something maybe one of the things on my bucket list of reading because I could imagine my mother if, if I'd have had a Zane book and she would have came. Now, that she when you say about your mom with reading something, mine would mine would be on her knees and clutching her pearls. So that, <laughs> that would have been something that had been me with that book, but. It's, it's in, in your your demographic. Let me ask you this: as far as um, demographic, as far as race, you you think African Americans more than Caucasian, or you have a larger Caucasian following? I have a large mixing of both. Um, okay. Yeah, you know because um, I interact with with fans that are Hispanic, that are you know. Pale white, <laughs> you know what I mean? mm-hmm. um, you know, you know, you know, African American. Um, so you know, which that's something that, you know, I mean, it shouldn't have surprised me, but, but it did. You know what I mean? Because, um, you know, I just assume that because the majority of the females in my stories are African American. Um, that it would have resonated more within the own, you know, you know, within African American race, but, but, um, you know, that obviously is not the case. Um, so, 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 you know, therefore, you know, I, I marketed, you know, my books to everyone. You know what I mean? Everybody is welcome. Come, sit down, read. <laughs> um, you know, so. So yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Are you a full time author, or do you do something else, or you have another profession? Um, well, homeschooling my kids and taking care of the house. God knows that is a full time profession. Oh, yeah. But well, well, let me rephrase that. Yes, yes. Something outside of the home. <laughs> no, no, no. Okay. No, uh, no, no. I, I, I write. You know, and I also, you know, juggle my publishing duties, and that's it. Because, you know, between all of that, I really don't have time for really nothing else. Honestly, I don't. Which one do you prefer, being the author or the publisher? Oh, Lord. Well, you know, you got good days, and then you have bad days, you know. (laughs) Um, You know, to, you know, wearing... You know, the publishing rises to the top, you know what I mean, and then the writer comes up. <laughs> um, I actually like them both because from both of them, you know, I, 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 it, both of them feed, feed me in different ways. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Um, with the writing, you know, I can just check out. I don't have to think about anything. You know, I can go into my mental little world, you know, and my, kids and my husband be looking at me because I'm over there in the corner and I'm laughing at myself, you know, and they're looking at, you know, why are you laughing? I'm like, well, I'm laughing at what I just wrote. And they're like, yeah, but you just wrote it. So why are you laughing? You know what I mean? <laughs> uh, you know, um, you know, but then also too, you know, I do like the business aspect, you know, because, because that entrepreneurship, you know, you know, spirit has, has always been ingrained within me. Um, so so that's the reason why I actually do like having uh, my own publishing company because, um, you know, that fulfills that, 
need and that hunger, and and I like being able to give new writers, you know, a platform, you know what I mean, so that they can be heard. And, and, and so, therefore, I find that to also be very fulfilling as well. So, so both of them, you know, to answer a question. Okay, okay. I like them. <laughs> well, let me, you know, especially with your, uh, with your genre, do you, um, do you plan, have any plans maybe going outside that genre? I know you said you do a little bit of the, um, you said Flash? Par paranormal. Par paranormal. 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 <laughs> Besides the paranormal and the um, romance, erotica, mm -hmm. uh, do mm -hmm. you pl have any plans to go maybe into another genre, maybe? No. Else? No. Uh, no. Um. Um. You know, which is real funny because I think it was my son. He was asking me that question. You know, because you know they always. They're trying to give me an idea. You know, Mom, you know, why don't you try to buy a book about that? Uh, uh, but um, I don't really, you know, I I don't mind reading books that are based in, in, in historical times. But me, myself, writing one, no. Um, Sci-fi, I like watching my Star Trek with the original Captain Kirk with the William mm -hmm. Shatner. Um, yeah. you know, but 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 me actually going into that genre, no. Um so I will probably stay within the two genres of um the paranormal and what's considered like the contemporary, you know, type of romance. Um, you know, uh, in all their various forms and fashion, you know, like I'm thinking about writing a cowboy, you know, type of romance. Um, but still, that's still considered a mainstream romance type of thing. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, so, so no. And, and honestly, I honestly think that writers that they need to be mindful about that anyway, you know, jumping from genre to genre to genre, because um, sometimes it can be confusing to the reader. See what I'm saying? You know what I mean? Yeah. Because, because they're left wondering, what is this person going to do next? You know what I mean? Um so, therefore, that is the reason why, you know, I don't want to be hopping all over and, and, and trying to cross-pollinate and, you know, all this other stuff and all these different genres um, because I don't want to to lose the fan base that I have and that I'm growing um, because, you know, they're left scratching their head wondering, why the heck is she writing this book with this green alien? You know, but that's just me. <laughs> yeah, because they they get comfortable with you being uh, in a certain genre. I can understand that. And then when you jump up and you switch and you jump to something else, and it leaves them uh, confused and not understanding why or where where this come from. And I can understand exactly. that. Do you? And another question: it's, I find that a lot of authors um, they they kind of cross over into speaking have you found have you found that you have you been doing any speaking anywhere or can you see that in the near future because i can because i know there are a lot of things that now that are popping up here locally and surround especially uh the new orleans area uh and atlanta mm -hmm. where there mm -hmm. are different um events and things that they have especially geared towards mm -hmm. uh the sex industry and um i could see um you you being the author in that particular genre, being a part mm -hmm. of that. Have you experienced that as of yet as far as being a speaker at some of these events and conferences that no they're having? One, no one has not asked me to come and speak at their events. Um, mm -hmm. I think that it would be very interesting if someone did ask me to come speak in, in their sex industry type of event. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, but... Um, no, 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 uh, you know, but but I'm definitely open to it, you know. I mean, um I don't have any problems, you know, with 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 public speaking. 
Um, you know, I like meeting people. You know, um, so so yeah. You know, I would I would I would definitely be uh, be open to particular type of speaking engagement. Okay. Um, yeah, yeah, sure. I love yeah. it. I I may have opened up a door to someone down here. Somebody may be listening. I may have opened up a door just now for you. So you never give me a call. <laughs> <laughs> so that uh, and and let me ask you uh, this: as far as uh, to the, to date, how many books have you written? Oh my God! It's too many. For, you have to think about it. It's, it's that many. Yes. Yes. But you did say three a three week turnaround. I think the first book was released what three years ago? Uh, two thousand and fourteen. Um, um but 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 there have been times where, you know, I did go like on a little hiatus, you know what I mean, that I would come back, you know, um, type of thing. But I would probably say to date let me see that. Cause don't tell my husband. Okay, all right, all right, or right, you gonna have to help me add. Okay, all right. <laughs> so, so don't, so don't tell my husband was a was a three book series, and then the spinoff from that was also three. So then that's six. Mm -hmm. Um, and then I had one big finale, which was one book. So that's seven. Okay. I'm counting my fingers. Uh. <laughs> Then I had The Extraordinary Love, which that was two. And then I had One of a Kind Love, which that was two. And then that, so that's 12. Um, and, then, and then that's when I changed my pen name to Christine Gray. So then I had one standalone, two standalone, three standalone, four standalone, five standalone. So then that's 16. Mm -hmm. Then I did... Three books in my vampire series, which so that brings it to eighteen. No, yeah, no, nineteen. Oh, it's 19. Um, yeah, okay. So the net brings it to nineteen. Then I did my no one can love you like I can, which that was a two book series. So then that's twenty one. And then I did another standalone, which that was Irish Heat. So that's twenty two books. Right now. In about in about a two and a half year span. Yes. Oh my goodness. Yes. And <laughs> and and I've already outlined four more uh, additional books to round out the Lord Spare My Life 2017. So if I'm able to do all four, then one, two, three, four. Well, then that would be 26. That I my would have in my belt at the end of the year. My goodness, I, I just don't know where you could possibly find the time. I can't even imagine. And you have three kids. <laughs> you're homeschooling them. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I just, I have, and then you have a publishing company. And then on top of that, you have a husband. Yeah. Yeah. Oh um, yeah. my uh, Well, I tell you what. <laughs> I would love to know your ancient Chinese secret. I would love to know <laughs> what it is and how I can barely find time today to get the few things that I need to be done. And, and I'm I'm working. I'm I'm really working on my time management. And I'm doing a whole lot better. So I, I commend you on that because that I, that is that's that's more than amazing. Uh, that's out. That's just outstanding. Outstanding. I I really I just I just can't. I, I'm, I'm speechless. I'm totally speechless. So. <laughs> Uh, let me. I'm, I'm quite sure. I, you know, we're getting close to the end of the show, and I'm quite sure they're wanting to know um, when to possibly expect first. When to possibly expect the next book to be released, and mm -hmm. secondly, how can they go about? How can they connect with uh, Christine Gray via social media, website, just all your information on how to get um, books, how to contact you if they want you to speak at a particular type of engagement, and how can we make that happen? Okay, all right. Well, first on your list was when to expect the next book. Mm -hmm. um, Relentless, Relentless 4, which is um, in um, sub, sub side of the final kingdom come, that is the conclusion to the vampire series. Um, that will be released April the 24th. Okay. Uh, all right. 
Um, as in regards to getting in contact with me, um, they can get in contact with me through my Facebook page, which is Christine Gray Sapphire Rose um, on Facebook. Um, I'm also on Twitter, um, excuse me, on Instagram, which that's Christine Sapphire Gray. That's on Instagram. Um, if they wanted to send me an email or try to, con uh, try to get me that way, um, they should do it through my After Hours um, Publications. That's After Hours with an S, Publications with an S at Outlook.com. Um, if they wanted to submit to the After Hours Publications um, um, company, um, which, of course, I'm CEO over, um, of the, the uh, website is After Hours publications.com so and and if they link on to the after hours page um, and they go into our playroom they will be able to see my bio and then a link to my own personal website um, where of course you know you can get update info about what I'm doing and also be able to access my my books and such um, and, of course, also the link to my uh, website and social media and all that stuff that is also on my uh, Facebook page as well. So they can just click on it and be carried away. To, yeah. <laughs> to and, and, of course, they heard it here first. They heard it here yeah. first uh, on our radio. And my last thing for the evening is this. What mm -hmm. advice could you give and uh, either – a person that's thinking of writing a book or someone that is mm -hmm. a fresh, brand spanking new author, what advice could you give them? My advice would be to be very, very mindful of the person that you portray in public, especially on social media, all right? Mm -hmm. um, you want to portray yourself as a friendly person, um, a very engaging individual, but you also don't want to um, create a persona that you are rude or or you know just come just combatable. Okay, um, let let people talk. Let people you know you know say whatever that they want to say. But you be mindful about the way that you yourself portray your brands and yourself as a writer. I, I truly do believe that you get more flies to honey, um, you know, than, than being sour. Um, and readers pay attention, all right? Um, and, and you want your readers to feel like you are an engaging individual. Um, and that uh, you are really um, focused on your craft, and you know, going back and forth with with the bickering and you know, yada yada, and attacking people. Also, that is not the type of business person that you want to portray yourself, because negative information always carries faster than positive words. Okay, um, so so that would be my advice. You know, just hustle, stay focused, and keep your nose clean out of all of the drama that um, tends to pop up on social media. Oh my goodness, you sound just like me. I I, I, can, I, I say that over and over to any entrepreneurs that are here in, in town. You know, they don't realize that. I, I tell them all the time, anything negative travels 10 times faster than something That's positive. Right. Social media mm -hmm. is not the platform for it, and you just confirmed that. Yeah. I'm hoping that some of these people that when I promote this show uh, via social media, that they're listening and they hear that. And it just, it's just not me saying that. that it's, it's somebody else that believes that and thinks that and knows that, and I appreciate mm -hmm. it. I, am, I, I can't thank you enough. I have really thoroughly enjoyed this interview, uh, getting to know Christine Gray and her process and uh, a three-week turnaround. I'm just stealing all about that number. <laughs> <laughs> I'm stealing all. 
And I just want to thank you for joining us. Um, and hopefully, uh, once you get those next group of books out, we'll be chatting once again. I'm super excited. I'm excited for you and continue to do what you're doing because it seems that you love it. And when you love something, that's very important. And as for you listeners, I want to thank you again for tuning in, taking an hour away from your Sunday evening, uh, which I know most of you are probably preparing for tomorrow, which is Monday. It came too fast. And I want to thank you for joining us on Oompa Wild Radio, and I look forward to chatting with you next Sunday, same time, same situation. And I bid you all farewell and good night and enjoy the rest of your evening.